What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So since the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X released, people have been battling resellers online just trying to get one of these systems at a decent price. Well, finally, we have some big news around these systems actually appearing in stores and we're gonna go over that one here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about another listing that's popped up for a Nintendo Switch title, a game that's already been announced, but this would be the first time we've heard about it for Nintendo's platform. And I just talked about Kina and the physical copy that may get announced at some point. Well, it looks like it did. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with Monster Hunter Rise, a game that sold very well for Capcom since it released months ago. And now it looks like they are continuing their collaborations they've been doing, which they did one with Street Fighter, and now it looks like they're doing one with Mega Man. They released this trailer here showing off Rush from Mega Man 11 specifically, it appears. September 24th, they have an event quest reward, that being the Rush costume for the Palamute. It will have a layered armor set. And they even showed Rush with like the, the little springs so he can jump up on the cliffs and just higher ground essentially. I, I like the idea of these collaborations. They're just fun. Capcom has these properties, so why not work them into what's become like their most successful franchise overall, that being Monster Hunter. And hey, if we ever get a Mega Man 12, at least people can look at that and say, hey, it's the dog from Monster Hunter. Also, we had talked about THQ Nordic's showcase they did, and they also had a sale to go along with that over on the eShop. We'll take a look here. This is the THQ Nordic 10th anniversary sale. Save up to 70% during the THQ Nordic's 10th anniversary sale. They have it running from September 16th all the way until the 29th at midnight, essentially there. And if we take a look at some of the deals, they do have Rehydrated, that being the SpongeBob SquarePants remake, sitting at $20. They have all the Darksiders games being marked down pretty well. War Master Edition down to $13.49. Same with Darksiders 2. And then Darksiders Genesis, down to $17.99. They also have Kingdoms of Amalar Re-Reckoning on sale, as well as Destroy All Humans and even Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, which while that is an older game and maybe it hasn't aged well all the way around, it's still a fun time to go through being less than $10 here. Certainly check out the sale that they have going on right now as there are some pretty good titles in there. Oh, and for a while now, we've had this Pokemon trading card game online. It's on PC and essentially when you bought those booster packs, you got that code card in there. You could input that code into the game and you would get those cards from the booster pack. I believe those specific ones even and you would then be able to battle people online. Well, now it looks like that game is actually evolving. It was announced in a trailer yesterday. This from the Pokemon company, Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. And this is, I guess, just a new digital Pokemon trading card game. It's gonna be launching on PC, Mac, iOS and Android devices. That looked to be the biggest thing that people were talking about. It is gonna be something going to cell phones. No mention of the Switch, and it's strange because this seems like something that would make complete sense on the Switch. It is a free-to-play game. They are talking about digital currency that would use to buy packs, although I think that's how it was in the previous version, or I guess the current version now ahead of this one. Um, and I would assume they are going to start leaning more into microtransactions, considering you will not be able to trade cards in this version of the game. Now they did mention that you will be able to transfer your data over, and I guess they are looking towards a release for this later on this year. So take a look at this one, especially if you have not gotten into the Pokemon trading card game online, and maybe you like the idea of a digital card game with these current Pokemon trading cards. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with in-store restocks for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. We can head over here to Tech Radar, who had the exclusive on this one, where they say PS5 and Xbox Series X restock at Best Buy stores this week, and we have proof. They go on further to say that Best Buy will sell PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X consoles in stores according to multiple sources. Now, they also mention here they have proof that the PS5 and Xbox Series X consoles will be stocked at Best Buy locations for September 23rd. So coming up here pretty soon. They also mentioned that by Wednesday, they'll be able to tweet out a list of Best Buy stores that are confirmed to have PS5 and Xbox Series X systems on hand. And people were talking about this a, a bit online. I saw some mention that they worked at Best Buy or they heard from people that uh, working at Best Buy and they're seeing several consoles, not just like 
five or six or something. I'm talking like, like 20, 30, 40, even 50 consoles per store. So this isn't like a small restock. And this is good news overall for a couple of reasons. One, if you're willing to go there and get there early, you should be able to get one of these systems provided you're not, I guess, in a, a very crowded area where people will be rushing Best Buy because they have done this with video cards, specifically like the RTX 3080, where they would do a, a ticket system. You would get there early enough, and as long as you were in line to the point where they had enough tickets, you would get a ticket, you could then leave, come back, and pick up your video card, pay for it, all of that, and then go home with a card that would normally cost you twice that amount minimum online. Now it was limited to certain best buys, but I remember the list for the video cards, like the 3080, it was a pretty long list. In fact, the one near me had several of these RTX 3080s, and I'm gonna assume the best buy near me will also be on this list for PS5 and Xbox Series X systems. We'll have to see if, if we get any word on the split, like will they have more PS5s, will they have more Xboxes, and, and all of this thing. Kind of plan out your morning and how you want to go about getting one, or maybe even both of those systems. But this is good, mostly because as soon as these systems start showing up in stores again, I believe that online resellers will essentially move on because the biggest advantage they've had, specifically people looking to scalp these different consoles and sometimes sell them for 100% markup, is the fact that they weren't in stores, so you are battling bots constantly just going through checkout. And even then, if you get through checkout, there's a chance that maybe Walmart, Best Buy, Target, whoever, just oversold systems and they cancel it on you. We were already getting to a point where the prices were starting to come down online to where they were sub $800. It's talking like $750 for a PlayStation 5. So if this falls even further because they start showing up in stores, especially going into the holiday season, you might just see these prices crash back down to normal with shipping, of course, thrown on top, maybe even like an eBay fee of like 20 bucks. So you might look online and say, okay, a PS5 now is 550 that includes the shipping and, and all of this much more manageable than 1000 or 1200 dollars or so and i'm hoping that we start seeing more and more of these restocks in stores also consider this it's been almost a year since these systems have come out right we'll see that in november this would be the first shot we've had at just going to a store and buying one of these through like a register which is so weird to consider that but it's been a weird couple of years. Either way though, keep an eye out on Twitter, especially with Tech Radar, to see if your Best Buy near you will be getting a PS5 or Xbox Series X. That way you can kind of plan things out so you can finally pick one of these up. Next up, let's talk about a game that's been announced, but not yet for the Switch. However, it does appear the Switch has shown up as a system for the game through a classification board. You can see this tweet here that shows that classification, this being for Alan Wake Remastered. This one is from the Brazil Advisory Rating Board. And as far as I can tell, it was then pulled down, or at least a lot of the, the links people were putting out is going to just a, a completely blank page or one that says there, there's uh, no longer permission to view it. So I don't know if it went live a little too early or if it was a mistake in general. However, we did see Remedy get control on the Switch. It was just through the cloud. And I thought about that and said, would they do Alan Wake remaster through the cloud? It wouldn't shock me. It would be strange because it's a 360 game. You figure they could port it over to the Switch natively and sell it there even in stores on a cartridge. However, we have seen the cloud leveraged in different ways. Maybe if it was a bit easier to do that than work on porting the game from all these other platforms, specifically to the Switch. Now I do have questions as to why if this is legit and it is coming to the Switch, it wasn't just announced when the game was announced for all these other platforms. Like, would Nintendo really say, no, no, we have to announce that in the Nintendo Direct. You can't just go out there and tell people it's on the Switch. That wouldn't work. I, I just, I feel like they would have just said it along with the Xbox and, and the PlayStation. I mean, they even said Xbox One S. They got very specific with all the consoles and systems that they were announcing it for. It's weird that they wouldn't just say, oh, it's also coming to the Switch gray Joy-Con system and the Switch neon Joy-Con system. That's, it wouldn't make sense to me that they would hold it back for a Nintendo Direct. So. I do kind of look at this rating as like grain of salt because we have seen ratings boards make mistakes in the past where they just accidentally listed a system that it wasn't coming to and they pulled it back down and then put it back up. So we'll keep an eye on this one, but kind of keep that in the back of your mind as we head towards what people are anticipating to be a late September, maybe early October direct that 
Alan Wake Remastered certainly could pop up there. Next up, let's talk about Kena Bridge of Spirits. I had just been talking about a physical copy for this game and how the developers were talking about looking into a physical version. I figured, oh, months later, they're gonna announce it and it'll come out. It'll be after I bought the digital version of the game. So they're like, oh, you gotta, you get to buy it twice now if you want it physically. Well, at least they gave us a heads up because they did announce that there will be a physical copy of the game. It's just one problem. It's not gonna be out for two months. It's not out on release day today, but we could take a look at it here. They actually already have a pre-order page up over on MaximumGames.com, and we can see they do list many of the things that are coming with it, including a digital album, Golden Rot Skin, Unique Kena Staff, Retail Exclusive Sticker Sheet, Celebration Hats as well um, for Rot at a price of $49.99. This is releasing in November. Now, the game itself, Looks great. They released another trailer yesterday for it, kind of getting everyone set up for the launch of the game today. They also announced a photo mode for it, which is great. We'll see, I'm sure, many of those uh, photos showing up on places like Twitter. And they did also talk about uh, the different modes, performance mode, fidelity mode. Um, so we'll have a 60 frames per second mode that you can leverage there, which is probably what I will do. But I am in a bit of a conundrum here because I want to play the game now, right? I mean, we'll be talking about it, I'm sure, on the podcast this weekend but I'd prefer to buy it physically. I know that they're a smaller studio and looking into retail releases for some of these smaller indie titles, there is a lot that goes into it. It's not like how you know, Sony and Nintendo or Microsoft will show up and be like, oh yeah, it's in stores and it's digital all at the same time. They have to do quite a bit to get this thing on store shelves. But I guess if you wanna get it physically and you don't mind waiting two months or so, there you go. You can pick it up in November with all the extra things that will be coming in with it here in that deluxe edition. Either way, though, I am looking forward to playing this game today and seeing what it's all about. And like I said, I'm sure we'll be talking about it this Saturday night on the podcast. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the next flight for Halo Infinite, where we were promised we'd be able to play against other people in not only 4v4 arena modes, but also 12v12 big team battle. Let's head over here, this post up on Halo Insider, where they say, now as launch approaches, it's time to look forward to our second and even bigger tech preview. This weekend, September 23rd to the 26th, and next weekend, September 30th to October 3rd, we'll be taking things up a notch and testing out full-blown multiplayer. The first weekend will focus on the arena, that being 4v4 gameplay experience, and the second weekend is when Big Team Battle, that being 12v12, will come online. Now, they do have some of the game content posted up here with Social Arena, Bot Arena, Big Team Battle, debuting September 30th to October 3rd. They have three different modes there. Training mode, weapon drills, customization, battle pass, and the new Halo Waypoint app and web experiences. Now, they're gonna be scheduling this out. And I looked through the schedule here, which you can see, it appears to be like four hour blocks that will take place in the span of those uh, those three, four days or so. We can see Friday, September 24th, the 25th, 26th, and 27th will have different blocks of time. Looks to be 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific. And then later on that night, 5 p.m to 9 p.m. Pacific. And then moving over to weekend two, similar idea here, October 1st, October 2nd, 3rd, and then 4th, and then up to Wednesday, October 6th. We can see they have matchmaking available there, that being for Big Team Battle. I am really excited for Big Team Battle. 12v12 is gonna be mayhem, and that's what I'm looking forward to. That's what they mostly wanna be able to test here, however, is that their servers will hold up to, to something like that, because in the past, if you jumped in the big team battle, there was a good chance that it was gonna lag. That's why it was always called big lag battle online when you were just trying to match make and find like 15 other people uh, to play with. So I'm looking forward to all of that. The vehicles, of course, getting thrown in there and any new weapons they can introduce. And I'm just getting really excited for Halo Infinite. And I, I know the flights, it's not the full game, right? We're still waiting for that to come out with the campaign and, and all of this uh, in December, but it is nice to still be able to play the game on the way up to it. The only thing that's kind of unfortunate is that it is blocked off into certain times for matchmaking. I'd prefer they just open it up for the entire weekend, Friday night to like Monday morning and just said, go for it. But I assume they're trying to funnel everyone in to these specific blocks 
so they can just pound the server as hard as possible and see if it catches on fire. But either way, looking forward to all of this going down this weekend. Make sure you're signed up over on Halo Insider, so that way you can be part of these flights as we roll into Halo Infinite's launch in December. And before we go to the comment of the day, we'll take a little poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, have you played any of the Game Boy Advance Castlevania games? 70% of people said no, a collection would give me my first chance to play them. This is the reason I ask questions around remasters or collections, because while I may look at this and say, yeah, I, I've played those games a couple of times now, I mean, 70% of people have not. Same deal with like Skyrim or GTA 5. We keep seeing these remasters happen or these ports. And we might look at them sideways and then someone might pick it up and be like, oh, I've never played Skyrim before. Now I can on this new system that, that I just bought. So if uh, provided Konami doesn't mess this up and trip over their own feet and release some weird and collection that's like out of nowhere and it's the, the standard three Game Boy Advance Castlevania games, I would pick this collection up provided the price is reasonable. Like if they go like, oh, it's it's a $70 PS5 game or something, I might have to look at that a, a bit there. But provided this is a straightforward collection of those Game Boy Advance Castlevania games and it's priced fairly, I do not think you can go wrong with it. There's a lot of quality gaming here. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as we're seeing here. This is from Alex saying, sounds like a Nintendo Game Pass, which would make them a lot of money. I believe Nintendo could have their own Game Pass-like service, without even having to tap into Switch titles, even GameCube titles. Like, if they showed up and said, hey, we're gonna have all these Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, maybe get weird and put the Virtual Boy, some Game & Watch games on there, just package it all together. It's a subscription service. They have it on PC, mobile, and the Switch, and it's $10 a month, and they continue to add to that from their uh, first-party library, and they also get third-party companies into it, yeah, I think that'd be extremely successful for them. I think they would have a large subscription base just on that Netflix-like service because their legacy titles are so strong. And I mean, think about how people view Nintendo when they shut down all these ROM sites. They're basically like, well, you guys don't sell us your games or give us access to your games. So like, what do you want us to do? We're gonna go out and we're gonna pirate and download these games all over the place anyway, because there's no other option. And I believe with the subscription service, because the titles are so small, they're measured in like megabytes, you'd be able to pick one, it would probably download to your system, and then you would play it natively through that subscription service. So, again, it seems like easy money, but sometimes Nintendo's gonna Nintendo. And ladies and gentlemen, that's good to hear for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X finally showing up in stores this week. Are you planning your morning to go out there and try to get one of these at Best Buy? Let me know about that one. Also, what about the whole situation around Kena, Bridge of Spirits, it having a physical copy announced two months out? Are you waiting there for that physical copy or are you picking it up today to start playing now? And then what about this whole thing around Alan Wake Remastered on the Switch? Do you think it's gonna get announced or was that just an error with the ratings board? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.